a second that, yeah. story. Well, I came back from Laramie, Wyoming. I'd been married in college, and it was a miserable marriage. I was putting my husband through grad school in Wyoming. Called, um, I'm a city girl, no theaters, no bookstores. If you called in sick on Friday, everybody knew whether you were sick or not because everybody in the town, and I just couldn't wait to get out of there. Could not wait. I wanted to go home so bad. And I remember feeling so claustrophobic in Wyoming, you know, because the the roads would snow in and you knew you couldn't get out of town. No airport and everything. So uh, my friend from Columbus came to get me in a U-Haul truck and we drove back to Ohio. And when I crossed that border, I was like, oh my God, I am never leaving again. <laughs> and it was just so good to be home, to 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 drive through the downtown streets and see all the changes. There had been a lot of changes in that year and a half. Um, came mm -hmm. back in 19, March of 1977. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted, I, I had come back with an old boyfriend who wanted me to get married and go to West Virginia. And I was like, no, I really want to be home in Columbus. And I wanted to go back to the West Side because my parents had moved to Whitehall in my senior year of high school. And uh, I wanted to go home to the West Side. Yeah. And it turned out I ended up getting a job at the Department of Youth Services, Buckeye Youth Center, which was in the hilltop on the same grounds as the uh, Insane Asylum. Right. And that was, they had just stopped having girls there. And every, all the staff was going, boy, glad that's over. So um, actually, I've taught 33 years and never had a girl student because I've been in all boys. Um, at the time I started at Buckeye Youth Center, I, I think it could have been the same in the 10s or the 15s. It was a very old-fashioned kind of place. Mm -hmm. uh, the boys still wore their own clothes. They smoked in group, in fact, the um, youth leaders, as we called them, would light their cigarettes. And that went on for a long time until somebody said, well, it's illegal for youth to buy cigarettes, so, you know, why are we letting them smoke in a state facility? That was very shocking when we, everybody had to quit smoking. When I first started there, there was a guy named Bernie Brigham. He was the, uh, the superintendent of the institution. He had cancer. I remember coming into work one day and seeing him, and his face was green. He died mm -hmm. shortly thereafter. Yeah. And uh, a, a principal named Ron Stewart, who was a very inspiring human being. But um, it was a good place to work. It was sort of the hippie school. You could wear your jeans, your your flip-flops, whatever, to school. Um, and, and it was good to be back teaching. I had taught one year in East High School. It was mm -hmm. good to be back teaching, and it was good to be back home. Yeah. And um, stayed there. There were a lot of old trees on the grounds, too. But things tightened up and tightened up there. Um, I remember we used to lose kids all the time. They, they, I was a biology teacher at that time. And they decided there's a big park beneath there, behind there. And they decided that uh, they were going to make it into a nature center. And the teacher who decided that quit, and they decided I was going to run the nature center, which I was like 23 years old, and I was supposed to take a group of uh, juvenile delinquent boys by myself into what they call Tico Valley and do a nature center. And I kept saying, but no, I'll get raped. <laughs> And they decided, no, a uh, natural resources guy would come with me. Well, the natural resources guy had no idea of security in the institution. So when the boy said, oh, I want to run off and see that, he said, go, go. Well, it came up, I had two or three kids missing. And another kid said, well, I'll go look for him. And I said, go. <laughs> and before I knew it, I think I missed, I lost five kids on that trip. I had to go back and tell what they were wearing because they they wore their own clothes in those days. I couldn't remember what they were wearing. Before I knew it, the helicopters were whirring overhead looking for them. So uh, those days were not good. Um, I remember waking up one day and uh, 
thinking, oh, great, my classes are going to be better because they had on the news who had escaped from Buckeye Youth Center that night. And I thought, oh, good, I won't have him in third period class. So once that start, stuff getting, started getting publicized, they, um, they started building bigger fences and they mowed down the big trees so you couldn't park near the institution so they could see. And eventually that place was closed down because they couldn't really heat it. Yeah. Well, the whole big facility, was that when it sort of went into to decline? And yeah, the buildings down? were just a mess. They couldn't be heated. They couldn't be cooled. I like to write murder mysteries, and I know what death smells like from all the mice that used to die in the walls, and you just have to be in classroom and just say, well, they'll finish rotting eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, brother. Well, those are terrific stories. Well, thank you. They really are. 